Dr. Pepper shake. Good stuff. Gotta love Whataburger. Anyways, hi. How's it going? Saturday. Um, so, a uh, couple things to show off here. Number one, we got two things in the mail. I'm gonna go do those here in a second. First though, I was actually able to get out and do some in-person graphing for the first time since the channel has started. There was a uh, card show just over uh, at the Arlington Convention Center going on this weekend. So I swung by, they had uh, one free autograph per weekend admission. So uh, this morning they had uh, Toby Harris signing from about 10.30 to 11.30, 10.30 to 12, something like that. So I went ahead and got him because uh, I've had this 11 by 14 photo sitting here waiting to get some ink on it for uh, about four years now. Got it for some Rangers alumni events and uh, they just haven't been doing that many lately. So I'd never got this one done. Had it sitting there in my stuff and finally was able to take that down and get it signed. So very happy with how that one turned out. There we go. Try to get the glare off of that. There we go. Show the autograph a little bit closer right there. Nice big gold signature there. Put his number 11 on there. Kind of blends in on the arm a bit. But yeah, there we go. We can kind of see it right there. So there you go. Another one to add to the 11 by 14s. Another Indians one. Got to trade some George Brunette stories with him. He played with Brunette in Washington with the Senders back in 1969, 1970, somewhere around there. But yeah, I got to... Uh, said that uh, he was talking about Ted Williams and absolutely love him playing for him. And I told him, hey, great story about... Uh, if anyone doesn't know Brunette, uh, like I, I mentioned before on the channel, Brunette used to live next door to my dad in the off-season. And so I showed him a picture of uh, the newspaper photo of Brunette and my dad together. And so I mentioned to him, I said, yeah, it's uh, Williams is actually one of the first batters he faced in the major leagues. It was, I think, the his second outing only. He got brought into his bases-loaded situation. Didn't realize until he had two strikes on him that he was facing Ted Williams. Got him to bounce into the inning-ending ground out. And the next day at batting practice, Williams looks over and sees him and says, hey, kid, you learn to keep that fastball down, you've got a long career ahead of you. That was in 1956. Uh, George Burnett finally retired as a player in the Mexican League in 1985. So, uh, yeah, he did have a little bit of a long career ahead of him right there, another 19 seasons after that. Williams was actually their manager together when they were with the uh, Senators. So, also hit up a couple of card tables there. Was able to find some nice deals there. Grabbed, uh, well, first off, the unsigned stuff. Got the 88, the... 89 and the 90 Fleer update sets, as well as the 91 score uh, rookie and traded set. Got those, they had uh, they were three each or uh, four for 10, so I took advantage of that four for 10, grabbed up all uh, four of those. Got some stuff I can potentially get signed, got some decent rookies in there. 250 each is worth it. So yeah, real happy with that. And found one table that had a bunch of autographs for a dollar each, so. Snapped up a few of those as well. We got ourselves Chuck Finley, Arthur Rhodes, got Carlos Pena. Real happy to get that one. Got a no, not related to him, Tony Pena. And this one's got a little bit of a crease down in the bottom corner there. I might be able to flatten it out though, but a Cliff Floyd right there. So yeah, real happy to get all of those in. I mean, a dollar each, you can't beat the price on that one very easily. Makes up for not uh, having a national this year. I mean, that's like national prices right there. You can you can often find some tables there that have dollar each, sometimes even cheaper than that on autographs. And uh, once in a while, you can find some real nice ones if you dig through there. If I had more cash on me, I might have bought the entire thing out that he had there. But uh, I said I was sorry. I, I I wasn't trying to call you out on that. Whatever. No. Yeah. Awkward. <laughs> but no. So yeah, if I had more money with me, I probably would have bought out everything he had there. But at the same time, there's a lot of them that. Were guys that I'd gotten, guys I don't really have a major need for, um, doubles of a lot of guys. Like, I mean, he had a, he had like four or five Chuck Finleys, and there was a couple of Coco Crisp ones I nearly picked up at a buck each. Um, had a bunch on, like, guys like Robbie Thompson. There was a bunch of Franklin Gutierrez in there. I'm thinking, yeah, I might be able to use that one, but ultimately decided, nope, just going to keep it to the five bucks there. So, stuck to that one. So, yeah, showed those off, showed the hair off, the unsigned stuff. So, let's go ahead and get on into the two TTMs. This one, I have no idea who it is because this is before I started putting initials on here, and it's got the machine purchased uh, stamp right there, so no postmark. Let's all be surprised together. Got my letter folded around it, it looks like. My letter really neatly folded around it, fits right around them. And who do we have here? They're really tucked in there. Oh, and he also wrote a short note at the end. My pleasure, good with your collection, go Browns, Mark. This will be former Cleveland Browns quarterback, Mark Miller. Very nice right there. Signed all three cards I sent. Uh, sent a double, actually, of the uh, 1979 card 
right here. But still, there you go. So two of those plus, uh, like I said, one extra one of those. Show those two off. It's easy enough. Really happy to get that one back. I sent to a bunch of former Browns a few months ago and uh, got a few back. Still waiting on a few. That's one that I can finally knock off the list there. So one other we've got here. This one's going to have a Cleveland connection as well. The initials are JP. It's coming to us from South Suburban, Illinois. And I believe this is going to be former Indians infielder Jack Percante. Let's see if this is correct. And yes, indeed it is. Tough to find Indians cards on him. Got one in that box I picked up off of Facebook Marketplace. Grabbed a few uh, Mariners cards of him as well. So there we go. Got those back today as well. So seven signed cards by mail. One in person and five purchased. Not a bad day at all. Thanks again for tuning in. Uh, Tomorrow is a Sunday. Instead of doing a show-off Sunday, I'm going to do one on uh, kind of a how-to video. I've done a series of those. I've been talking for a while about doing a how-to video on what I put in my autograph request, how I write my letters, all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to do that. Um, you'll find out why I'm not going to do that tomorrow when I do this video, but it's going to be one on graphing etiquette, both in person and by mail. So a couple of posts this week on some Facebook groups that really, uh, really did not make me happy. Probably the best way to put it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, my cat seems to agree with that, that that's an appropriate way of putting it. But uh, yeah. we're going to go through into that a little bit there and uh, hope I can advise some people on why some of yeah. the stuff that they did in those posts are bad. And hope that none of you out there are doing that either. And for those of you who have questions on how to go about doing it, hopefully that will answer it a little bit as well. So once again, thanks for tuning in. Subscribe button. It's somewhere down here. Go ahead and hit that. Go and check out sportscardforum.com. Lots of great info on there. And make sure you're tuning in tomorrow. We're going to have that uh, TTM and IP autograph etiquette video there. So uh, hopefully that'll be fun. We'll see you.